Hey there, everyone. It's great to see you guys again. It's Wednesday, the 5th of December, 2021. This is David, you and your product manager from Blue Chip here with senior product manager, Mr. Matt Goodman here. It's good to see everyone. If you can throw yourself out in the chat, you know, make yourself known. It would be wonderful to see who's around, who's out and about there. You can smell Christmas in the air. Oh man, it's a good December. We're just going to wait on a little bit more, uh, you know, a bit, bit more time so that we can get a few more attendees in. We've got about 30 people in here. That's really cool. Um, you know, we're going to uh, just have a few minutes of downtime while things uh, go, on, go on the way they are. Uh, after the first slide here, we're going to turn off our webcams just to save a little bandwidth, um, you know, continue on with the webinar content and do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if I just switch slides right here, we can now see that we've got the Extreme Accelerated VPN webinar. Thank you all for joining once again. Uh, it's uh, going to be X XGS firewall updates and all the VPN tunnel stuff that everyone's looking forward to in version 19 and a bit more about central orchestration. Uh, doing a little bit of housekeeping though. Uh, we're all here for the good old content uh, on the presentations between Mr. Goodman and I. I'll be starting on the first half with some super cool useful tools and whatnot on the first half to keep you guys uh, all up and running, especially the sales team and anyone who wants a quick update and refreshes onto XGS. After that, we're coming over to Mr. Matt Goodman for a little bit more of a technical deep dive, a technical demo and how things are going there on central orchestration and SSL VPN, super exciting things. After that, Will be the Q and A, the good old uh, you know questions. If you have any, make sure to shout them out and put them in there because everyone who asks a good question will get a twenty dollar gift voucher. So let's all help each other out. Let's all get some information flowing so that we can end this uh, good old December and the and the good year on uh, you know and close some deals. All right. Uh, and then finally for the last part, we've got the lucky will spin. You know, for all the attendees who are currently present and registered, you will have to call out yourself. Uh, you know, when when we spin that lucky draw spin wheel right there and then we're going to uh, announce who's the winner of that amazing espresso machine i'm a coffee lover myself make sure you start the day uh, on, a, on a good note everyone deserves a, deserves a good coffee uh, make sure you don't go uh, down that instant route once uh, once you have a good espresso shot inside of you okay so I'm waiting just a little bit more on the five minute mark uh, i got a got a little bit of a um crazy things while we're waiting though got a bit of commentary for all of you around there uh you know it's it's a bit crazy on the security landscape these these days with the log 4j or the uh, log 4 shell uh you know the zero day vulnerability out there it's got a 10 out of 10 severity rating uh you know it's 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 crazy for anyone who kind of doesn't know uh, about that um uh, for beginners you know for super beginners it's uh, basically a widely used java library for logging error messages and applications you used basically everywhere, Atlassian, Amazon, um, Microsoft, all the major vendors, you know, Splunk and VMware. So if you're out there, it's hit about 40% of the corporate networks with thousands and thousands and thousands of exploits. Um, so, you know, uh, make sure to watch out for it. <laughs> you know, I will launch a quick poll right now while we're, uh, while we're kind of waiting just to see uh, what's um, the... Uh, just to see if anyone's been hit by that. So there's a poll in progress out now uh, just while we're waiting and see if you guys have been hit by the log4j. Oh, not many, as I see, that's really good news. That's really good news because uh, it's it's hit a lot of people so far and it's really, really dangerous. Uh, on the Sophos side of things, just to finish up this last minute while we're waiting, if you have Sophos email and cloud optics, those have already been patched uh, with a brief outage on last Friday, uh, but the mobile EAS proxy, if you're using that, make sure to update to the latest firmware version 9.72 immediately because that is the only thing that's been impacted. Everything else is pretty much all good to go. You know, uh, you know, it's it's uh, everything's been uh, it's uh, not a, there is no violation side of their code um, but it is Sophos mobile e eas proxy if you are using that if you got any horror stories or any cool stuff make sure to plug it in the chat box so we can all read up on it and have a laugh afterwards well not really a laugh because it's gone going now so it's really crazy uh, i know that there are a few great security partners uh, oh i see right sec here that's awesome welcome to the uh, welcome to right sec who are you know incredible security providers there so you know they'd, they'd, they'd be the experts about that um and it's just past the five minute mark. Awesome, we've got a we've got a quite a few people on here. So stay in tuned, uh, you know, stay tuned, uh, and uh, you know, stay in touch. We're at the end of the webinar. We've got all the fun stuff going, and I'm going to kick it off uh, right now and turn off my camera.
Cool, cool, cool. So here's the agenda. The first half is me. It's David Newen, your, your product manager over here with the latest news and useful tools. We've got uh, breaking news on the XG uh, end of life stuff that's out there right now. Um, the XGS version 19, what's coming, all the good old features, hardware changes and licensing changes for the XGS series devices. That's the first half. I'll finish in about you know, 20, 20 to, to 22 minutes. After that, Matt Goodman running for a technical demo, good old central orchestration, what it's all about, SD-WAN, SSL, VPN, and tips and tricks. At the end of it, the Q&A, the lucky draw just like we said it's going to be a fun time we're going to try to keep on time because everyone's time is extremely valuable now and uh, you know it's uh we want to make sure that everyone comes out of the day uh refreshed it's only wednesday and there's more of the week to come okay if you've got any questions shoot them inside of that uh question panel right there so without further ado, let's start into it. For anyone new to XGS and for anyone who's uh, old <laughs> to XGS or, or currently already um, doing all the stuff there, this is the most useful update that's probably going to come out to, to uh, all of you now. The sizing guides, the sizing calculators, if you recognize anything on this screen, they're, they're out. They're out. Finally, we've got a new replacement to the sizing calculator on XGS series devices. Okay, No longer do you see anything from version 14 or version 15 or and some intense uh, questionnaire that they've probably sent you before, uh, you know, using the partner portal, and it was a bit convoluted and clunky. We've now got the beautiful, beautiful, thank God, thank goodness we've got it here, the firewall sizing calculator at firewallsizing.sophos.com. And it's so new, mind you, that if you Google it, you won't get it. So bookmark this link right now, firewallsizing.sophos.com. It's got everything you need, including XGS on the hardware stuff, Azure AWS, and virtual appliances. All right. All you have to do is punch in the throughput, the maximum throughput you got on your firewalls uh, right there, with how many users you have at the bottom. And if I'll just quickly shoot out a laser pointer real quick, right down there, uh, how many access points you want, and the VPN can save you tunnels and anything you want inside of Wine Protection. And it spits out to you free, awesome, <laughs> and uh, very easy to read uh, models that you can select. You've got the optimal, recommended, and minimum here okay you can shoot that there will also be uh you know the save function in case you want to get it into a document format you know shoot it off to your customer for reference shoot it off to our pricing team uh and uh you know just to get some quotes on it or a second opinion uh but that's that i highly recommend once again you bookmark it because that's not on google right now that's how fresh it is firewallsizing.sophos.com okay latest tools and good for anyone who's out there who's currently using xgs or not using uh, or just getting started rather Okay, the next thing we have is the latest news uh, from the Sophos launches. We've got uh, some awesome uh, products coming up inside of the Sophos portfolio, ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access. Free early access is now available in case you wanted to launch that demo where official launch is on the 5th of June. 2022. So make sure to get on top of that as well. Uh, Zero Trust Network Access versus a normal VPN. There are loads of benefits. And if you ask me a question about that, yeah, well, you might you might win a prize. We'll see. No, I'm I'm kidding. Uh, uh, compared to the standard VPNs, it's so much more secure, so much uh, so much better at what it does. Instead of just dropping you off and giving you 100% mobility and access, Zero Trust Network Access is uh, just that much more secure in reading how you are, limiting your access to exactly where you need to be uh, or in users. And then of course we've got the Sophos switches, you know, they're launching uh, actually tomorrow. So that's really, really cool. Uh, you can order one as of tomorrow. We've got local stock in country from January, but if you wanted to get those switches uh, out to your customers, uh, you know, may maybe in the beginning of January per se, you can talk to us or you can contact us. We can see what, what we can do about it. There will be a total of 10 switch Sophos models, 10 Sophos switch models rather that coming out, including any models with, uh, you know, eight, 24 and 48 port options, uh, one gigabyte ethernet or 2.5 gigabyte ethernet options including various you know power for even or poe options if you prefer uh and they do support synchronized security and you know security harpy and all the good jazz so they're selling the singular network stack will never be easier when it comes to having software switches but you can get more information from these on the software website if you google them simply because it's probably the easiest thing to do at this point uh, if i don't have unfortunately too much more time on those but they are exciting new product releases the next piece of breaking news from yesterday morning, actually, when we had a uh, meeting with the vendor themselves, they've extended the XG firewall series end of life date. Okay, which is another incredible thing uh, to see simply because we had a lot of frustration with customers having uh, such a, a limited time frame for lifetime. So they've extended it one more year. The new, uh, the new end of life date uh, is March 31st, 2025. It used to be March 31st, 2024. So extended by exactly 
one year, still selling XGs as well, simply because of the stock availability that's still out there. The free hardware promo, if anyone's out there who, who's uh, or used to it by now, is being pending review. Okay, so well, we'll see what happens back then. But there, you know, check in if for availabilities and whatnot, because this thing is still out there and, and uh, not going end of life just yet. We've still got a bit to squeeze out. But do remember and book in your calendar. The final renewal for all XGs will be March 31st, 2024. After that, you can't buy one month subscription, uh, one month subscription SKUs or one year SKUs. Okay, so that's the final day. Book it in uh, and make sure to get a migration plan up and running in the case of the customer is a little bit, uh, you know, a bit more wary about that. So one, uh, one year extension from there with a new end of life date of March 31st, 2025. Okay, uh, but that doesn't change for XG85s and 105s. It does not. Those are still 17th of August 2022. Now 2022, it looks like a big number to me in terms of the in terms of you know the year because uh, the, the year has moved so fast. But that is only approximately what like eight about or eight or a little bit more than eight months uh, from now. So if you've got an XG85 or an XG105, wireless or otherwise out there, make sure to find a migration plan. Speak to your software account manager. Speak with the customer. It's going end of life. It's not a good look if you get caught uh, unawares. Okay, so XGS is the way to go. Now, all of this stuff has not been updated in the retirement calendar just yet. The software retirement calendar is your is your uh, go-to point for all of the stuff that you're going to, um, you know, all of the end of life plans and dates for the products and whatnot. But it's not updated because this uh, news was only released yesterday. So crazy thing that you're everyone here is uh, you know getting the the first uh, the first point a call for news. I'm going to launch a, a, another poll real quick just to, just to make it um, really cool. Um, and uh, it's going to be, the, the question is, what do you prefer, SG, XG or XGS, now that we've gone a little bit on all of uh, our, our product models? Uh, reminder that SG has not gone end of life just yet, so you know, don't worry way too much, but you can switch it to SFOS, which is the new operating system in the case that you want to try it out. So while everyone's gone on XGS right now, that's how, that's how, um, <laughs> that's how amazing it is. Uh, but if we got a few people on SGs. They were reliable and they are really good as well. So you know, good to see a uh, uh, kind of a mixed crowd of majority inside of XGS. Now on to the next bit of news, just while we watch that poll real quick. We've got version 19 coming out. Early access once again is available in case you wanted to get on top of it. Early access uh, for uh, you know all the new SD-WAN link management stuff. I'm not going to go way too much into all of this simply because uh, Mr. Captain Matt Goodman will be running a demo and, and having a little bit more of a look inside of version 19. We've got SD-WAN real-time login graphs, uh, all of the good stuff which uh, provides automatic ISP link monitoring and route, um, routing based on performance metrics like latency see jitter, uh, jitter or packet loss, which is extremely important and it's all real time. Uh, customers, you know, you can easily set up a SD-WAN link routing strategies on the first available best quality. So that's super easy to go for as well. And a lovely global menu search, which is similar to Microsoft Office Suite or, you know, your smartphones in the settings menu where you can uh, click on the search, where, you know, put in fingerprint, for example, it comes up with the setting that you need. That's always been handy. Uh, and we've always been trying to get that feedback in order to get through to them. And the last thing, uh, which is super, super useful. If anyone was over from the UTM-9 series, the SG UTMs, uh, we've carried over, or rather softwares have carried over AWS VPC, which allows the easy connection of AWS, uh, AWS network infrastructure. Okay, and uh, you know, just to give you a super quick glimpse of that, because I'm super excited, all you have to do now, just like in, in the previous UTM days, uh, SG UTM-9 days, input your AWS IAM user credentials in there, so the system can detect and then upload the tunnel configuration associated with your XGS firewalls public IP address. And if I just get my laser pointer out here real quick, right there, right there. It's it's so easy compared to what is what, what it was before. And I'm very thankful uh, for software introducing that. Of course, there is a second option in case you wanted to literally download the configuration file from Amazon, uh, sorry, from uh, AWS and then uh, get it right there and then upload that file in. So that's coming in version 19. I'm super excited. Matt won't be touching on that. So I just like to point it out real quick and make sure that everyone is aware of that. Uh, let's move on real quick to now. The, those are the updates. Now it's the actual XGS series device outside and inside, which I'm really excited uh, to, to bring down to everyone here. So there is the new hardware and there is the new licensing which we're going to take a closer look at. Okay, we're going to break it down first. First is the new hardware. Okay, 
So in terms of the XGS series model lineup, we've got first the desktop models. They're quite similar in, in naming convention, uh, if you didn't notice, for the XG series devices, but that's literally just one digit up, which is good for us because, you know, we're still used to naming them XGS 87 or 86 or et cetera like that. It's just one model up. So we've got 10 Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, 10 total models, including the Wi-Fi integrated models, uh, which are on global stock shortage, uh, by the way, everyone. So please watch out for that and be aware of the global stock shortage during this crisis for Wi-Fi models, as everyone is definitely aware of right now, I'm sure. But these are perfect for branch offices, retail, and smaller offices, simply because of their, you know, their, their small desktop compact size. Every desktop model now has an SFP port, thank God, because NBN's rolling out for fiber connectivity and some models, uh, some models have POE built in as well okay all models except for the 87 and the 107 have modular base okay for the 3g 4g modules and uh, sorry backup failovers which is extremely popular and we've got uh the next up one are you uh, rack mount models as well for anyone inside of uh, uh, branch offices or remote offices they want to secure they have branch offices or remote offices they want to secure anyway uh that's uh uh, all well and good. The two U rack mount uh, kits are more for the enterprise edge, new connectivity built in, uh, high density modules behind there. We'll take a look at that in the future with a, a little bit more, with no uh, no compromise in performance and uh, all the redundancy features you could throw a rock at, to be honest, uh, to power and secure those more demanding environments in the enterprise edge. T taking a look at uh, the hardware series real quick, uh, there is modules and accessories, okay? It's been extremely important to bring uh, more diversity down of modules and accessories down into the XGS series devices. Uh, there was extremely popular to bring down 3G, 4G modules, uh, and I'll get out my laser pointer real quick, right here, were extremely popular on XGS, sorry, the XG125 series devices, now down onto the XGS116 series devices. So bringing that, uh, you know, um, uh, value down into the the, uh, the lower desktop models. Of course, we've got Wi-Fi modules and uh, SFP VDSL2 modules as well. So those are all fine and dandy. I won't go way too much into the high density ports uh, uh, for the uh, for the one U and the two U rack mount uh, model kits, um, but you know they they are there available. If we take a look at the back of one of the 116 modules for any beginners out there, you can see that the expansion bay right there is where you slot in. One of these, uh, one of these modules, um, you know, next to the one gigabyte Ethernet copper ports, uh, and of course the uh, SFP ports and etc. So right there is your beauty if you want to upsell and cross sell. Okay, um, let's keep going. This is a super quick matrix just so that you don't have to pour through 26 pages of a data sheet on the XGS, XGS series devices. And as I said, the 116 series now comes with the 3G, 4G module optional availability. It used to come only on the XG125, so you had to move down a level now it's all uh, you know it, you can you can start having a more comprehensive uh, you know network security environment and all the redundancy features are uh, down on those kind of desktop models right there these uh, this slide deck will be distributed out to everyone after a thank you email or if you wanted to screenshot it right now you're more than welcome to as well of course but uh, you know it's kind of like a, a quick reference point in the case that you are on the call of a customer or whatnot uh, and of course this does go onto the higher end models as well you start seeing ssds uh, in, inside of your uh, models and the 2U, uh, 2U rack mount unit kits and also an internal redundant SSD on the 4500s if they're looking for that. A plethora of, of you know, uh, mounting units and flexi port modules and on all of your good stuff. So we are here to serve, uh, Sophos is here to serve every single uh, ent uh, business, whether it be small or enterprise out there. Okay, um, so that'll be distributed out uh, um, at the end of the webinar, of course, and uh, let's move on. So uh, people are going to, people constantly ask me the question, how do you position an XG versus an XGS in terms of performance now? Uh, you know, are they the same? Are they different? Um, so that, and that's a really good question, simply because uh, if you look at this graph right here, all of the XGS series devices have moved up a level to match the next, uh, the, the level that was uh, above on the XG series. So for example, an XG86, uh, sorry, an XGS87 is equivalent to an XG106, an XGS107 is equivalent to XG115, uh, and so on and so forth going all the way up. You won't see uh, a 7000 model up there of the XGS series because the XG, uh, because the, the 6500 model has actually uh, boosted the performance and you know filled that gap. So there is no gap in the portfolio. And uh, you know, 
Now, this is an intention to sell a smaller box, for example. Uh, it just provides a lot more sufficient headroom to size the appliance, especially in the next three to five years. Because as we've seen from the last 18 months, network requirements take a really drastic turn. We have no idea what's going to happen uh, you know, in, in the future. People might be coming back to office, you know, going forward from offices, more remote offices maybe may be coming out there. It's definitely, uh, uh, it's, it's definitely in order to boost the performance and to size for the future. Okay, But that performance uh, now has been increased, even if it's uh, so easy as to say, by about a level or so of that, and you can use the final I will size guide in order to help you out a little bit more as well. But let's find out uh, a little bit more about why that performance is increasing. And it's it's because of a dual process architecture. If you dive into the box, now that uh, that dual process architecture or called uh, you know extreme architecture, uh, every model now combines a high performance multi-core CPU, used to be a single core CPU, with a dedicated extreme flow processor for hardware acceleration. We'll take a closer look at that in a little bit, but that means that the newer models have an increased number of uh, interfaces. You can support a lot more stuff. Uh, you know, have got a lot, lot more connectivity options, uh, and you can you can do just so much more with the protection performance uh, and with the, the bandwidth that you know is now handed and the hardware accelerations and the performance boosts that it gives you, okay? So if we just take a quick look at the extreme architecture, the fast path that used to be on the XG, which is essentially finding trusted, uh, um, trusted network traffic and then uh, taking that trusted network traffic and delivering it through uh, you know, all of the, uh, the firewall stack and the, and the DPI engine, uh, you know, ignoring all that and going straight to the network, it allows more room for the, uh, you know, your real-time data, your voice over IP, your cloud or your software as a service applications, uh, you know, where latency is the arch enemy, you know, uh, in order to pass through and have hardware, uh, you know, a, a better uh, performance there. Um, so what used to be, a, you know, the, uh, the standard firewall path, now it's completely a fast path, and that is a hardware uh, that is now hardware based. It's no longer a virtual base. Um, so it used to be purely software, as you can imagine, and powered by one main CPU only. Now it's completely a hardware layer. Okay. Um, so if we keep going, uh, Sophos Firewall now in the XGS Firewall series, uh, it, it honestly provides some powerful protection, some great performance. Uh, you know, especially in this ever-evolving landscape, and you know, increasingly tight budgets and additional infrastructure that's always required uh, to support changes in uh, how and when users connect. Uh, you know, we we now give organizations uh, performance headroom to scale up whenever they need to and wherever they need to, should they require it. Okay. Uh, if we take a look now at the licensing components. This is where it starts getting juicy and where the value is also seen, uh, especially when it comes to the, the subscription components of how XGS firewalls uh, are taken in. It's really, really simple. If you're familiar with Enterprise Guard, it has now become a standard protection. That's it. The network and web protection foundational licenses are still there to stay. They're completely identical. And that's only the first step. The second step, is if you're running full guard or enterprise, uh, enterprise guard plus, I'm turning my laser pointer once again, full guard or full guard plus, you will see that it's now become extreme protection. That's it, super simple. All of the um, support options on the right hand side have remained unchanged, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and I will point out that the, the, the only changes in extreme protection are the following, email protection and web server protection, which is a web application firewall, okay? So it's one lead bundle now, it's extreme protection. Okay, and you'll see that the changes are email protection web server. They've added in zero day protection, which used to be Sandstorm, which is the cloud sandboxing, and they've got central orchestration, which Mr. Goodman will fill you in on in a little bit, but it's a bit about SD-WAN and firewall reporting and all the good stuff. So uh, people were asking, why, why would we pay for email protection or web server protection or web application firewall when we don't need to use it? Only 2% of deployments out there in XG were using these. So this is good value for money because no longer are you paying for this, even if you do get free hardware. It's web, app, it's web the, the zero day protection, or rather Sandstorm used to be in central orchestration, are way more beneficial for what people are going to use on just a general day-to-day -day basis. And I'm almost finishing up now, so thank you for bearing with me on all of these updates. Uh, we've got a new, uh, just to summarize once again, extreme protection, the new and improved, standard protection, or you, what used to be enterprise guard, you know, just, just call it standard from now on, network and web protection. 
right there, okay? Uh, and for MSPs, it's even easier, which is why everyone loves the MSP program so much. It's one single bundle with everything if you so choose. Of course, you can go for extreme protection and standard protection on an MSP, but it's such, it's so simple in order to bundle this into all of your portfolios. Uh, if you are an MSP, get those get the services running for most comprehensive protection, includes email protection and web server protection, zero day protection, rather sandstorm, and central orchestration as well. So for MSPs, that is the way to go. I'm gonna launch one more poll just to, uh, to quickly finish up on my side here, and I'm glad I'm running on time uh, before Mr. Goodman comes up and uh, does his good old technical demo. But the, the question is, will you be running XGS on MSP? Uh, yes, no, because I love the free hardware promo, or I will consider it maybe, or, or, or it depends on how it goes. Remember to contact us if you, if you want anything to do with MSP. Uh, uh, or uh, anything to do with Sophos, rather. So I'm going to finish on this slide. I won't talk on it simply because this is all just a sneak peek of central orchestration and the demo which Matt Goodman is going to uh, give over to uh, everyone. And he's going to do a, a bit of a deep dive. For all the salespeople who are a little bit nervous, don't be, don't be. It's more of a, a, a look, uh, more of a deeper view into how things are set up and how easy it can get in order to uh, get SD-WAN and all the SSL VPN stuff on uh, XGS firewall. Okay, so uh, that's it for me. I'll see you at the end for some Q and A and for the lucky draw spin. So stay tuned, Mr. Goodman. I'm going to mute myself. It is excellent, Noel. Thanks, uh, Dave, for uh, taking us through that. Um, yeah, lots of changes with the uh, the licensing. Um, it's definitely something to you know have a look at um, what what customers were using, what they've using what they could be using uh, and really start to see if you can take advantage of some of these new features. Um, and one of the features which we won't cover today is the zero day protection, uh, which are formerly called Sandstorm. Um, that's something you can actually, yeah, part of the extreme license now. So you can actually turn that on um, and um, people can start using it. Um, today, we're gonna focus on uh, some specific areas around the central orchestration. Uh, which is one of the new features in the Extreme Bundle or in the XG series or the XG firewall, or what it's called now is the Sophos firewall. Um, so they're going to get rid of the uh, the XG and just make it the Sophos firewall. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, start off with, uh, let's start off by sharing a screen here. All right, so what we're going to start off with is actually joining a Sophos firewall to Sophos Central. Uh, so what we've got here is uh, we've got a number of Sophos firewalls that we've, uh, we've spun up. Um, we've got one here that's effectively fresh out of the box um, and we want to join it to, to Sophos Central. So on the actual firewall, we go to Sophos Central uh, and then we've got the registration area. Now this, what I'm going to show you here is a new way of joining the firewall to Sophos Central. So there are the old way of doing it, um, which was using emails, um, you have to go and create a username in Sophos Central and uh, as a customer administrator, not the partner administrator, get a password, set it and register. Um, there's a new method uh, in version 18.5 MR2 or 18.5.2, uh, which uses one-time passwords. And that's what I'm gonna show you now, just to show you how easy it is to, to join it. Uh, I'll go back to the control center and just show you the, the version. So you, what you want to do is actually upgrade to this version. Um, now you may have to do that via the My Sophos portal and do a manual download uh, and upgrade because it's still in that uh, stage release. Um, but uh, it's definitely kind of worthwhile. It's, it probably takes you, it'd be quicker to upgrade the firmware and then join it to central, then kind of create those usernames and stuff. Uh, from my experience, it's a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, you know, it's always a bit of trouble. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, other side of it. Um, let's go have a look at Sophos Central. Um, so we'll go back one step. Um, so this is a Sophos Central dashboard um, and I'm gonna go down to the firewall section. Um, so if you remember previously, we had the central firewall management um, or CFM or cl actually it was cloud firewall management um, and that's gone now. So it's ev everything now, you create a Sophos Central customer account uh, and then you manage the firewall from within that account. Uh, so we've clicked into this, uh, it's nice and fast, nice and zippy. Uh, we go to the firewall section 
uh, and we're going to show a list of firewalls. So here I've added a few firewalls that we've um, been using as part of our demo. I've got head office and I've got a branch. Um, what I'm going to do is go and add the additional branch office. So I click add firewall. Um, I'm going to add a join a file that's already configured. So I'll click that button uh, and it's going to ask me for the serial number. So we'll do a quick little changeover. Let's grab that serial number from there. Go in here and we'll paste that. Uh, so that's going to paste in and it's going to come up. How do you want to do this? Do you want to do register email uh, or do you want to do one-time passwords? So there's a little guide of how to do it, but the one-time password is the easiest. So one-time password, all I need to do is click copy OTP and finish. So it's copied that. I need to jump into my firewall, look on the menu down to Sophos Central, uh, click register. And then go use one TP, oh, one OTP. Oh, I use OTP and paste in there. So it's a rather long uh, certificate, uh, but it um, makes it super easy. And we're done. We're joining Sophos Central and the firewall uh, together. Uh, so this is just going to process through. Uh, I'll flick back to the other screen just to see what's going on here. So we can see here that it's uh, got the firewall in there. It's got management disabled. Um, so um, Come in to see, show you what that means in a second. Um, but you see, pretty much it's instant. Like I added that firewall, bang, it appeared in here. Um, so we've got coming back to the unit now. Um, so we can see it's registered. Um, we can see that we've got security heartbeat turned on, synchronized app control, but the SOFOS central services are not turned on. That's the management services. So what we do is go ahead and uh, click on, and we want to send the reports to SOFOS and we want to manage it from there. And we want the backups to be in SOFOS Central as well, because uh, the uh, you never want to uh, have a, you know, a firewall, a down firewall or a firewall that was uh, destroyed in a fire or a flood or something, and you just don't have the backup or the password to the backup. Um, remember to save those uh, backup passwords. Now, if anyone's got any questions, um, please yeah, use the, uh, the GoToMeeting chat to uh, uh, ask some questions and um, we do have prizes for some uh, some good questions today so uh, um, definitely uh, go ahead and ask those. Uh, what we've got here is now the waiting for SOFOS Central Ad Administrator to accept it. So we go back to the other screen and we go here you can see we've got an approval pending. It's really simple from here we click approval pending we click accept the services and it uh, now starts to uh, bring everything on. So now it's all connected um, and uh, we're, uh, we're kind of away and ready to go. Um, the name hasn't updated yet. Um, that should be, uh, should be updating to branch in a, in a moment. Um, but that's the, the new uh, SOFOS Central uh, admin. Yeah. So if anyone's got any questions about that, um, please uh, place it into the, into the chat. Um, so this is uh, the yeah this is an XG file XG or XGS or XG file it doesn't really matter um, they're all really the same the difference between the XG and the XGS is the underlying hardware the operating system um, they brought out 18.5 when they brought out the new XGS series um, but a lot of the XG models can run the latest version of firmware except for the two that David mentioned uh, earlier um, so the yeah, so this is 18.5.2. Um, you just have to upgrade to to get to that OTP um, section. All right, so the next thing we're going to show is the new Sophos Connect client. Now, you may have seen some, uh, you know, Sophos is end of lifing the SSL. Um, people thinking, oh, what, what, what do you mean Sophos is getting rid of SSL? No, they're just getting rid of the old client that's there. So, what we're going to do is go to a, our particular unit, uh, this particular one here, and we're going to actually configure the, uh, the SSL. So the steps to configure you know, the SSL for the techies, and what we're going to do is kind of show a bit of the tech here for the admin side of things, and then I'm going to show you the, the actual user side, which is a, a better workflow that is going to make it easier for you to sell more VPN services and uh, sell more files and stuff to make it just, you know, VPN should just be easy. Um, so what we're got, going to do here is, first of all, first thing you want to do is just make sure your uh, default uh, certificate authority is all configured. 
Um, so I've got something in there, it's all, all configured uh, in some form. Uh, the next step after that is we wanna go ahead and go to VPN, and we're gonna go to SSL remote access, and we're gonna go ahead and create a policy. Um, so this is for our Sophos, no, this is HQ network. Uh, we're gonna add me as a policy member. And what are permitted resources we're going to access? Uh, we're going to access uh, the LAN. So I'm just going to create a network object. Let's do that. So created that network object. Let's go ahead and save. Um, a tip: don't be confused by using. Um, that'll get you to port one, but it won't get you to the network. Um, so. Uh, it's sort of an ob it's a reference to a host name, not a, sorry, an IP, not a not to anything on that port. So go ahead and click OK. Um, so this has created the uh, the SSL VPN policy. It's ready to go. Now with Sophos Connect, um, you've actually got to go ahead and deploy it. Um, now there's a few ways you can download the actual client. Uh, one is um, you can download the client on the Sophos here. Um, so down the bottom, download client. Uh, the next way is you can actually go to uh, the Sophos user portal. Uh, so this is, uh, if I'm a user uh, and I'm logging in to the system, I can go to the user portal um, and this is sort of a self-service portal to, to do things. So uh, um, you can turn that on as the administrator and then get them to log in. Um, but uh, if I can uh, type the, uh, the password right. Yep, there we go. Um, it'll take us into the Sophos uh, self-service portal, and then we can download the Sophos client, Connect client for SSL VPN. So I can click that, it'll download, uh, and what we'll get um, in either method is a installer. Um, so, and inside this installer is a um, the Sophos Connect package for Windows, and also the Sophos Connect for IPsec for, for Mac, but um, the SSL for Mac, you still have to use the, the tunnel click client for now. So, so now that I've got uh, the client, um, I did actually deploy it. Um, you know, I could just run it and it actually installs, but you know, we're talking about efficiency and things like that here. So use an RMM tool, use group policy, or use some other tool to actually deploy the client to the workstation. Um, so the next time the user logs in, bang, Sophos SSL is already installed. So here's something I prepared earlier. So I've got Sophos Connect deployed on the system. Now that we've got it installed, now we need to configure, sorry, we need to get the policy that we've configured uh, attached to the user. So there is, again, sort of a, you know, there's a few ways of doing it. Uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the fast way, uh, and then I'll show you two, uh, I guess, uh, slower ways. Um, so what we've got is for the Surface Connect client, there is something called a provisioning file. So the provisioning file is nothing more than a JSON text file. I'll just scroll down here. Um, that is configured as a, to point back to the firewall. So you're, you're the uh, Jim's accounting. Um, they've got a Sophos firewall with a particular IP address or a host name. Uh, and what you're going to do is essentially plant a seed in a uh, uh, onto the Sophos Connect system, so it knows where to then go and connect and download the configuration. So what does that look like? Uh, so what they've got here is the seed file. This is a little JSON. Um, this is the IP address we're running on our WAN. Um, I've got that all uh, configured uh, here. Um, now with this particular file, um, all we need to do, so switch that back is, um, we just need to run it or actually import it into Sophos Connect. So I'll show you the import method. So we're gonna import a connection, go to Sophos. And it's just gonna import that in there. Um, and then all we need to do is go ahead and connect. Um, make sure you, uh, we're just using some fake, uh, some uncertified certificates or validated certificates, but uh, if you, uh, you obviously you wanna make sure it's all secure for users. So I'm gonna log in again. Um, going to save my username and password. So what it's doing here is it's actually connecting to the firewall, 
downloading the policy for the user Matt, um, and now it's actually connecting to the server. Um, and we're connected. So we've got the policy, it's connected, and we're done. Now, one of the things that um, with uh, SSL is um, you've got to update the, you know, the certificate will expire or there'll be a new configuration or something like that you need to push out. Previously with other clients, you had to go in, the user had to go into a Sophos portal, run a file, like that sort of thing. And um, it, uh, it would, disc, you know, it would uh, not work. Um, so what we've got here is uh, in, in each of these configurations, there is an update policy option. Uh, so here you can actually go to the update policy and then it's going to ask for my username and password again. Uh, if it's not saved, uh, and then actually download it again. So it kind of makes the administration of policies and configurations and stuff like that, uh, you know, super easy. Uh, the other ways of uh, deploying it is um, rather than manually deploying the, the configuration file, sorry, manually deploying the configuration file is that you can uh, deploy the client Uh, sorry, the provisioning file in a particular directory. Uh, so we'll just open up a, another window here. And we go to C colon, program files, Sophos, uh, let me see, x86. There's an import folder in the, uh, the Sophos directory here. So Sophos connect, and there's an import folder. So if you place that provisioning file in the import folder using group policy or an RMM tool, it's going to read it and then suck it in and import it. So you can automate that, that deployment of uh, the config. All right. Uh, the final way of doing it, which is the old way, um, is again, you as the user, you log into the self-service user portal on the firewall. You download the configuration for other OSs uh, and download that file to the, their PC. That will then appear here. So that's that mat underscore SSL VPN config. Uh, and then you just import it as we did before. Um, so I'll just delete this one, import config. And then it's going to uh, just import the file. And then I can just go ahead and connect. Um, and away we go. Different IP address because of an earlier demo. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much it. So if you've got any questions, on the uh, SSL VPN or Sophos Connect, um, yeah, reach out. Um, like what I've shown you today, the um, is is pretty much how quick it is to configure. It's kind of not using any trickery or videos and that sort of thing. Um, the thing that's you just have to probably the thing that will take you a little while to create is this text file. But all you do is go to uh, Sophos.com and go to the documentation, copy the sample file paste it in and then just change the IP address and you're done or the host name is probably a better way of doing things and off you go. Um, there's a few advanced options in there but um, uh, yeah this is just a simple configuration. Um, you can do it auto connect and one-time password, 2FA, all that sort of thing, prop, bring up the second prompt, that sort of stuff. So um, that's all there. So uh, Got some, uh, just some questions there about uh, this, some technical ones. Um, let's go back here. Um, so with SSL VPN, uh, by default, it's going to use TCP, um, but you can flick it over to use UDP if you want to, which will be faster. Um, although, you know, some networks might not allow that out, but um, you know, most of the time they, they will. So um, that's there. Uh, and another one was just about IPsec. Um, so IPsec um, is still there. You can use the Sophos Connect client for IPsec. Um, IPsec uses yeah, UDP port 500 or port 4500 um, to, to connect. Um, and then within that, you'll use uh, the, uh, the TCP and stuff there. So, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions about SSL VPN, um, definitely uh, let, um, yeah, let me know. All right, so we'll go into Sophos Central now. So back in Sophos Central, uh, we'll just see the firewalls here. They've all been added. They've got the latest version um, and 
see what products they are, all that sort of stuff. One of the other things in central orchestration is, is and, and just in general in SOFOS Central now, is the firewall uh, reporting. Um, so here we've got the, uh, the report hub. Um, I'm just going to ch choose a, a test unit that I've got some, some data on. Um, and this is just a quick little dashboard of showing you some of the stats of what's, uh, what's going on with this unit in the last you know, 24 hours. So we've had um, a antivirus incident, we've got a zero day threat incident. Um, so I'm just going to click that little circle, it's going to change this graph down the bottom. And it's just going to tell me, okay, it was a one eligible and one cache malicious. So uh, if we want to go ahead and drill into that, we can click report. Um, and it's actually going to go into the report generator and have a look at the zero day protection report template. In the last 24 hours, it's going to tell us what the test file was um, and what IP address downloaded it. Was there a user tagged to that um, using the, the layer eight stuff that we have? And then what was the intelligence on that? So um, we can go ahead and from here, go ahead and click that straight away. So I'll click the, the static analysis and, uh, oh, sorry, that's, that's, um, that's what it is there. So yeah, it's gone ahead and downloaded that. And, uh, it's uh, failed there. Let's try that again after we've enabled some pop-ups. And uh, away we uh, go. No, let's, uh, let's not do it on my machine. We're running a little bit, uh, we've got a virtual machine running. We're a bit uh, stretching some resources here. Um, so we've got the reporting there. So there's other reports around, uh, oh, there we go. It's worked. Um, so this is a report on that particular file. Um, and this is what you get out of Sandstorm or zero day protection. Um, so it's an Adobe Reader sample. Um, it, what it, when, when it ran in Sophos's emulator, uh, it, uh, it then uh, put these files in here, access these network resources, and you can see the whole process tree. So, uh, and then the screenshots of what it actually looked like. Um, this is a, it's a test file you can run. Um, if you want to test Sandstorm, um, you can go to uh, sophostest.com and you can then download some Sandstorm test files, some virus test files, uh, and you can even test your web filtering as well without um, actually going to a site that may be uh, dangerous, uh, you know, not, not appropriate to be testing with. Um, but yeah, you can go click gambling and it will take you to the, the gambling site and, and you know, block it or allow it, that sort of thing. All right. Um, yeah, some other reports you might have, want to have a look at here is the threat events uh, that are blocked uh, or allowed. Um, let's go ahead and see that there. So it's showing us these are all the firewall events that were blocked. These are the source IP addresses and countries. Yeah, so a bit of information there. I'll let you kind of add your own firewalls and, and uh, play around with it. All right. With um, Five more minutes to go. The last thing that I want to show you as part of central orchestration is uh, the SD-WAN configuration groups. So normally with a VPN configuration, if anyone's done it, it's if you're doing more than you know two or three sites, it can be a bit of a challenge. You know, it's a, it's a bit of work to make sure you got your tunnels right and that sort of thing. So in Sophos, now we have the um, you can actually create, uh, and I'll go back to the unit to show you. You can create two types of tunnels. You have the normal site to site tunnel, and then you have the tunnel interface. So one's called the policy route site to site, and one's called a route based VPN, um, policy based VPN, and then route based VPN for the tunnel. Um, so with the SD WAN configuration, it uses the tunnel uh, or all the route based uh, VPNs to create the tunnels and then just create the routes that go across them. So what I'm going to do here is connect uh, two branches in a head office in a hub and spoke configuration. So I'll go ahead and create this. Go ahead and put uh, Sophos demo. Uh, we're going to connect the head office, the branch and the virtual branch. Put them in there, get rid of that one. Um, we'll go next. So we selected the firewalls. The second bit is, okay, what resources do we want users to access? Um, so what, in this particular case, at the head office, we've got a server um, that we want to access. And uh, 
and then what resources or ports do we want to restrict it to? Um, before I do that, apologies everyone, let me just show you the uh, the diagram of what this um, what we've got here. Um, so we've got a head office site with an XG firewall, we've got a Sydney branch, we've got a Brisbane branch, uh, and there was me as the remote SSL user. Um, so what we're going to do is join the branches together and give everyone access to the, the server at the uh, head office. So that's what we're going to give access to. I'm going to say create the firewalls automatically because it's just great for the, the demo. You might want to do it another way, um, but you go ahead and save. So now these are the resources we want to access. Let's click next. Uh, and then what we need to do is, okay, what networks at each of the sites do we want to um, get access to? So let's say we want to get access. Uh, so this is the network we want to do on that one. You just have to kind of go through each one and um, just choose which networks you want, uh, which I'm doing now. So I've chosen all those. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. Um, and what it's doing is going to head, go ahead and create those tunnels and, um, and it's going to create two tunnels between the head office and branch one and head office and branch two. So while we're waiting for this to, to load up, um, what we've got here is we've got a view of firewalls. So it's showing us three firewalls. Um, we've got two links there, um, but we can also view it as a tunnel view. So we have two tunnels that have been created and uh, we've got three firewalls. Um, while that's loading up as well, let's go have a look at the, uh, the Sophos firewall itself. Um, so this is our head office firewall. You can see it's created a IPsec tunnel on the head office. If I go across to the branch one, it's created a tunnel there. And again, on the other branch, it's created another tunnel. This one's now come up. So, so it's just gonna go ahead and create them uh, as we go along. Um, so we'll just uh, let the APIs do their thing. So now on the head office branch firewall, we've got two tunnels um, and we're just waiting for those to, to come up. All right. Um, so this is just gonna create the two tunnels hub and spoke architecture. Um, while this is sort of coming up, we're gonna make a change. Um, what if we needed people to access the branches needed to get to each other? So what all you need to do there is go ahead and edit the configuration and just add more resources. So if at one of the branches, uh, the virtual branch here, 50, dot, uh, 50 uh, we've got some services we wanna access. We go ahead and add that in there, create some firewall rules, go uh, next and then finish. We don't need to do the networks again because they are already done. This is now gonna go ahead and um, create um, these additional tunnels. So um, looking at the firewall view, three firewalls, but now we've got more than, we've got two tunnels. So here we've got a tunnel that's between the virtual branch and the head office, uh, between the branch and the head office, and now we've got a tunnel between the branch and the branch. So effectively we've got um, a uh, sort of a, yeah, all sites connecting to all sites. Um, so you, as you, if you need more resources for people to access, you just add them in to there or, um, uh, and get it going. So you can see that the original two tunnels have now come up um, and the other one is, um, is being added. The great thing about this is that as you make changes, it doesn't bring all the tunnels down and then bring them all up again. So you can add and remove networks and resources um, seamlessly without you know, interrupting the, um, the, the network that's, uh, that's there. So uh, this screen will refresh uh, every, uh, every few moments. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we'll, uh, we'll just go back to the map. Um, so effectively we've joined these sites with IPsec tunnels um, and, uh, and they're all, all connected. Um, there we go. Well, it's all good, good, good. 
uh, and then you know, as if we have some users at the site, we can ask them to now test it and they would go ahead and, uh, and connect. Uh, so it's pretty, uh, pretty easy when you've got to do lots of different tunnels. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sort of simple. Um, other ways you can use the tunnel interface is to create the tunnels on each of the sites manually if you wanted to, uh, and then go ahead to the routing and use static routing. Um, you could use some dynamic routing, BGP or OSPF, uh, or here you can see it's created these um, central policy routes for um, the different uh, these different services. So it's just using it's yeah, connecting the sites together uh, and then doing routing across them. All right. Well, I think um, yeah, if you've got any more questions, I think we're getting close to uh, Q and A time and uh, towards the uh, the end there. A um, couple of questions popped up. I can see there. Um, the tunnels, do you recommend the red tunnel, the VPN tunnel? Um, so okay, a, a an IPsec tunnel um, yeah, is, is one way. They're really just two different types of technology. Um, the red tunnel is sort of an SSL VPN type tunnel using the red tunneling um, and then the, uh, the VPN there. Whatever works for you, um, I think the maybe the SD-WAN might start to take over some of the, uh, the tunneling, but um, it's just, all, I guess, all different options. Um, I think the red tunnel is very unique to uh, to Sophos. But Dave, I might hand over to you, and um, then we'll come back to some of the other questions there. But, um, um, but actually, awesome. before that, one one someone did ask SSL VPN going end of life. Now, the SSL VPN going end of life is uh, it's a particular version of the particular client for Sophos. Um, it's not SSL VPNs going away or anything. It's just the uh, um, I guess the end of support for the version one um, and easy way to think about it, it's, it's the one that looks like a traffic light. Um, so that one's going uh, uh, going away. So uh, cool, Go. let's go, Dave. Should I flick back to you? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I can switch over to the, you know, the proper slide and we can go from there. Incredible, everyone. So thank you so much for your questions. There's actually been so many of them. And, you know, in, in the case of this webinar, it goes a little bit over time. I do apologize. Uh, you know, the, the questions are limited to, to, to one one gift card each for, for the really good questions. But uh, I will I will go through a few of them, which I've uh, basically answered my myself. And, and Andy, you know, it's a triple shot long black, so that's that's, that's all good there. But uh, the questions related to so far are the ones are going to win the gift cards uh, there. If, if we don't get to you, we'll make sure to reach out to you, uh, you know, at the end of the webinar. Uh, and, and you know those gift cards are on a first come first serve basis uh, so you know we will reach out to you uh, don't worry about, about missing out on the top of this our marketing team are right on top of it and they'll get to it a lot of really good questions here such as you know in relation specifically to the SG uh, firewalls uh, converting over to SFOS I answered answered to Mr. Uh, Roni Khalil, Roni Khalil sorry about I'm butchering your name there mate uh, uh, all SGs can be converted to, S, uh, to SFOS you don't need to contact us either uh, it's, it's all uh, will be equivalent uh, going to the equivalent standard or extreme license if you choose to do so. If you want to stay on SG, which runs full guard and integrated guard, you can completely do that as well. There are a few technical questions here, on which I will, uh, you know, let uh, Mr. Goodman um, answer as well. But uh, if we wanted to visit, there was one down here from uh, Mr. Ryan Greatorex, you know, uh, um, sure. asking if. Um, uh, if if a ZTNA was going to be a completely detached product, I know for for certain that it, it will be a completely separately licensed product. But it is a great advantage to run it in the Sophos ecosystem uh, with because uh, it integrates with, yeah, uh, yeah. on central, of course. And uh, definitely, uh, yeah. Look, it's yeah, absolutely, Dave. You're right on it. Yeah, it's a separate product, separately licensed product. Um, and you know, in some ways, that kind of you know hints at what it you know its use and what it can do. So it's it's you know it's a Traditional SSL VPN, which I showed today, is really just a point to point. Um, you're going from a remote user to the firewall. ZTNA is, um, it really detaches from that. So you could have a, you log, you authenticate um, with ZTNA, it checks whether your machine has got the latest virus protection, that sort of thing on it. And then it will give you access to resources as per your administrator. And that resources could be to a cloud resource. It could be to a firewall, it could be to, a, um, I guess a ZTNA proxy inside a network. Um, it, you know, it, there's lots of things that it can be accessed to. It becomes a point to multi-point, um, I guess, a VPN um, or 
uh, zero touch and uh, and and also zero trust. Sorry, zero trust network access and uh, you know in some ways zero tr touch. Um, but yeah, it's it's a point to multi point. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely if you want to have a look at more ZTNA, just download the uh, the uh, or get on board the early access and um, yeah, it's kind of free to try out the full product um, until um, until that early access ends in January. Awesome, awesome. No, thanks for that, Matt. Um, you know, well, we are running just a little bit out of time. So uh, for anyone who, who's asked questions and, you know, we'll, we'll try to get back to you as as uh, soon as we can after the webinar. We just want to make sure that we finish on time and, and keep everyone's schedules, uh, you know, as close as we can. Uh, so our marketing team will reach out to you if the question if the question is good and, and so that we can help you out. OK. Um, yeah, I think uh, maybe we'll, uh, a couple more questions, Dave. I think we'll, uh, there's some good ones in there. So uh, let's have a I think one of the questions is the uh, you know, access to the recording and the slides. Um, yes, the recording will be made available in the, in the slides later on um, that'll be there. And um, also uh, one really good question was uh, just about the, uh, the RED versus the, S, the NXGS. Um, and it's uh, actually a really good question um, that uh, comes up a lot. Uh, it all depends on what you want to do at that branch site. If that branch site doesn't need any filtering and wants to use its local internet connection, the red is a red tunnel back to the office is great. Um, but the moment you want to start doing advanced features there, then that's uh, that one starts to you know, lean towards more of an XGS. If the red site is or the branch is going to route its internet all the way through the hub hub firewall, um, then um, then yeah, the red device is a is a great thing. Um, but you know, it's 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 when you when you use that local internet connection, when you want to start doing filtering stuff, then that um, that's a uh, that's where you want to think about using something a bit more powerful than the than the red. Um, and uh, yeah, there is some license summaries as well, um, and we'll uh, we can send those out. But the, if you have a look at the XGS data sheet online, it really goes into some of the the summaries of the network protection, web protection, and that sort of thing. But I think uh, there were some good questions that, uh, uh, especially that red one, comes up a lot. Um, but uh, Dave, I think um, yeah, let's uh, let's finish it off. And um, yeah, we've, uh, we've got any of the other good ones, we'll uh, we'll send them out. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Another, uh, thanks for that, Matt. Uh, and thank you everyone for asking questions. I'm sorry, sorry we don't have. Um, you know, there was way more than we expected. And we we do thank you very much for your participation in the event. I will try to reach out to you after. Uh, but you know, without further ado, simply so that uh, we can keep everyone in time and and whatnot. Let's let's uh, move on to the next uh, the best part of the webinar, the lucky draw. I'm really excited. Uh, so how this is going to work? Um, you know, the, the grand ultimate prize is the Revel uh, Duo Temp Pro Espresso Machine. It's apparently the no frills version of everything you need inside of a great espresso machine without any of the, uh, any, any wacky business. It's all quality and, and, and all good to go from there. It's got a great steam one, uh, pull some great shots. You know, you got your tamper inside of the little left-hand side there. Wonderful to start off your, your espresso making journey. What's gonna happen, we've, we've got a, uh, a lucky draw uh, wheel spin here, which I, I'll share my screen real quick simply so that uh, everyone can see and if you can see that real quick it's uh, uh, quite literally just a, a draw with every single attendee who's uh, currently uh, registered here uh, and what we're going to do is going we're going to click this and you need to you need to if you're if you're here uh, then you need to shout out on the chat box or on, or on the questions, wherever you can, you know, rush to get that. We'll give you about 10 to 15 seconds uh, in order to claim your prize. Because if you're not here, you're not listening, unfortunately, you do miss out. Okay, so uh, Matt, can, can you see my screen real quick, just so I can quickly confirm yeah, where yeah, to go? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Wheel of Fortune here. So, uh... Yeah, the Wheel of Fortune. All right, everyone get ready. I'm going to spin this in three, two, one. Let's see who he comes out with. Okay, I'm super excited because you know the coffee is the greatest day to start. Oh, and we've got a really close one. Who is it? Oh, Stephen K. Stephen K. If you're here, if you're here, please, please shout out real quick. I'll give you about 10 to 15 seconds in the case. Oh, there, here, here we go. He's he's here in the question section. Yes, I am here, Stephen, at 4:04 p.m. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write. I'll make sure our marketing team gets that down. Stephen, Stephen, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for your participation. You've won the the good old espresso machine. Uh, and I hope everyone here has also had a great time. Um, you know, just uh, getting on top of XGS and of course Mr. Goodman's technical demo. Uh, that what do you what do you think?
think, Matt, you, you reckon it's about time to wrap up after, after someone's won a good old espresso machine? I think it's uh, pretty good. It's probably time for a, a coffee and, uh, or you may have already had a, had a couple today. Uh, <laughs> just having a look through the uh, the questions, see if anything else has uh, popped up. Um, so uh, nothing too much in there that we're not going to uh, answer outside um, of um, of this. So uh, yeah, and I think that's um, that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, we'll make this uh, available as a I guess a YouTube video um, not long after. And um, but yeah, if you have any questions uh, related to the Sophos XGS, the switches, ZTNA. Uh, whatever it is, reach out to um, you know sofos at bluechipit.com.au. Um, but Dave, yeah, I think um, yeah, we're uh, we can all head our head home. Yeah, awesome, Matt. Absolutely, you know, it's 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 a good time to end the evening. We will reach out to you if you guys have uh, won any won any prizes or anything like that. So expect something from us on the on the market team, the Sophos Blue Chip team. We're here for all of your Sophos needs, Blue Chip InfoTech. It's a great time to see every single one of you. Happy holidays from me, David Nguyen, and uh, of course. Mr. Goodman over here. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you next time. Cheers.